Hello church family, it's Michael here again to present another Devo with you guys and pray that uh, the Lord bless you through this and that he speak to you and that he'd speak to you through his word. Uh, today we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4 and before we get into it, let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you that we get to take this time out of our day, uh, take this time and devote it to you, Lord. Pray that you move and speak to us through your word, that you would show us what you would have to change in our lives and uh, that we would be open and ready and willing for that change. Uh, Lord, pray that you do your wonderful, miraculous work in our lives and those around us, and that we would be open to allowing you to move. And in Jesus' name, amen. So, we'll be in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17 through the rest of the passage there. And without further ado, let's get into it. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk, in futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanliness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt, according to deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, that you put on the new man, which is created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. So this passage here is talking about the new man and putting the putting off of the old man and putting on of the new man. And uh, what is being drawn across here is it's not us that does the putting off. Yes, we allow the work, but it is God who does the work in our lives. The word putting off in, uh, in verse 22, that's not just setting aside. That's throwing it in the garbage, incinerating it. It no longer exists as an attainable place to go, thing to grab. It's not graspable anymore. Now, often what happens in our own lives is we, we go along through our lives and uh, maybe there's something that we should be putting off because it's bringing us to this point where we are being drawn uh, back again by our dis the deceitful lusts of the, the old man and being drawn back into that and being deceived, being uh, drawn back into our former self. But this isn't, this should not be possible with the putting off of the old man. However, we often do what is so often done, we, we take this old past self and we set it aside. We put it barely within arm's reach. We we're not totally comfortable with getting rid of that. And we try to do it with our own strength. And this uh, keeps us in this place where we have this tugging at our lives. We're trying to walk in what the Lord has called us to do and we're doing, trying to do it in our own strength and we always fail. We go back into the old man because we're not allowing him to work in our lives, putting off the old man. It's, it's Jesus Christ. It's God who has watched us from our sins. He's the one who has provided the way of putting off the old man and walking in renewed holiness in him. But we have to allow him to do the work in our lives. It's like taking your, imagine a donut. You have a donut and this is a great, wonderful donut. It's, it's glazed on top. You got all the sprinkles and everything, but it's poisoned. And it, one bite, that's not gonna hurt you. But the more you eat it, the more it tears away and, and brings you down and the weaker you become. Now, if you set this donut within arm's reach, the first inclination without the pretense of knowing that it is poisonous is you're gonna want to eat that donut because it looks good, it's pleasant to eat, so you're gonna wanna eat it. 
but you take that bite and slowly it starts changing you. It starts taking and molding you not into the image of Christ, but into the image of the world. <laughs> the Bible says not to be conformed to this world, but to be transformed into like being like Christ. So we are not to walk according to the, the earthly uh, desires and the desires of this world and the uh, lewdness of the mind and the uncleanliness and all done with all greediness as the passage says here. We are to be transformed. Now, this isn't just no longer walking in the old, it, it's, it shouldn't be possible to walk in this path. Now, Proverbs uh, has a Proverbs in there and it, it talks about uh, a dog to its own vomit. As a dog uh, returns to its own vomit, so does a fool return to his folly. And that can happen to, in our own lives. We, we go through life and, and we realize, oh, this is tugging at my life. I'm doing this wrong. And, and, and we try to, in our own strength, take hold of that and deal with it. And maybe you don't even pray about it. You're just like, ah, this is so bad. I got to get rid of this in my life. But then you try it yourself and you fail. It's because you're not giving it to the Lord. All things should be done in fervent prayer. And can, it's like you have this heavenly father. He's, he's reaching out to you. He's there for you. And yet you decide to try to do everything in your own strength. You, he's there to, you pray to him and he shows you what you would have to do. But so often we think it's something so minuscule, so small that it's not really worth his time. It's not really worth his time to talk to him about it and pray and ask for guidance. God wants to help us wherever we're at with whatever we're doing. He's there for us, and he was compassionate enough to send his only son to die on the cross for our sins while we were still sinners, undeserving of his love. Yet he still loved us. He loved us first, so we love him back. If he was willing to do that for our sins, how much more is he willing to help you out in this small circumstance in your life, in this uh, sin or trial that you're dealing with that you just can't stop, you can't get rid of. Lay it in His hands. Let Him deal with it. <laughs>